Hello everyone and welcome to Useful Graphic Design Tutorials. It's Caroline here and thank you very much for dropping by. And today we're going to show you how to create a heart shape with text. And as you can see from the image on the screen, um, here is the heart shape. It's a very simple heart. We've outlined it in a slightly darker colour to give it a little bit of definition. We've added some blur to give it a 3D effect and then we've popped on some text. So that's what we're aiming for. So let's crack on and fire up Inkscape. Now I've got a slightly larger page here. I like to um, work with a, as large an area as I can. And to do that I simply clicked on the magnifying tool, just like this, and then clicked onto the work area. To reduce that, up to the zoom out button, and then that brings that back to that size there. Now I know that Davina likes to work with that completely removed and she does show you how to do that in a previous tutorial uh, but it, it doesn't matter what you do it's what you choose what is best for you okay so the first thing to do is to create a circle and we need a perfect circle so click on the create circle ellipses and arcs over to the workspace and hold down the control key and that will then produce a nice perfect circle I'm going to move that slightly up there now, the last thing that um, I use, and the great thing about Inkscape, is that it saves the settings on the last project. And I was obviously using pink. I think we're going to change that colour. So, if we go up to the Edit Objects Colours Gradients, that's a bit of a mouthful, isn't it? Well, otherwise known as the Fill and Stroke tool. So, let's click onto the Fill box and change the colour we want. I think that's OK. You'll see that the outline previously was pink, and that's no good. We want something um, which tones in with the blue. So click onto the stroke paint, click onto a darker blue, mm, something like that. Just make sure you've actually got some width of stroke in there. I tend to work with two for something like this. Okay, so that's pretty much okay. We'll get rid of that now. And the next thing to do is to duplicate that. So I tend to right click and duplicate or you can go up to edit and duplicate that way. Again, it's really what suits you best. One of the things that we need to make sure that we're doing on the circle once we've created the duplicate, moving it to the right and then holding down the control key to lock the horizontal axis, sorry, I mean axis of both of the circles. So the both level, in other words. Let's move it a little bit further in now. A little bit, that's it. Okay, so the next thing to do is to create a polygon shape. And I don't think we've done this before, but over to the polygon and star shape, click on there. Just make sure that the polygon is highlighted as opposed to the star. And again, the action is click on the mouse and drag. The shape really needs to have a point pointing downwards, as it were. And the easiest way to do this is to click on the shape, click again. That then creates the handles to curve. And using your mouse, just rotate until you've got a horizontal line at the top. Making sure that's selected, we want to move that over to the two circles that we've created. And here, and these corners here, you want to make sure that those are just inside uh, the circular shape. So that may require a little bit of resizing on the corners and the handles, but I think that's okay. So we've now got three separate shapes which we want to combine to one. And first of all, need to select them all, and you can do this by select all objects button, or control A. Again, it really depends on which you prefer. Once you've selected them all, go up to the path function on the toolbar here, click that, and then press the union key. And what that does is to combine all of the three shapes into one. And you can just then move that heart uh, around in one movement. I go to slightly make that a little bit smaller. Okay. The next action we're going to do is to create the blur shadow. So make sure that the heart is selected, right click to duplicate, slightly move that to the right and what we'll do is just change the colour of that 
to create the shadow. It doesn't really matter what colour you choose. I'm sorry if I'm making it a little bit queasy by go, going through the colour pack very quickly, um, but a darker colour to create the shadow is best. Secondly, we want to move that darker heart to lie below the blue heart. Make sure it's selected, then go up to the toolbar here where we have a set of buttons, one of which we want to choose is lower the selection one step. So we actually want to move this heart one step below the blue. So click on that and then that's tucked in behind. Nudge the dark coloured heart um, closer up to the the front of the blue heart and the easiest way and the most accurate way to do that is to use the keyboard arrow keys I find. Still making sure that it's selected we're going to go back to the fill and stroke tool and we're going to look at the blur slider and we're just going to slide that and just pr practice that a little bit until you're happy with the shadow that it's created. I think that's okay so we'll get rid of that. So finally just coming on to the last things and that's creating the text for the tool. So click on the create and edit the text object. I'm going to put love it on there and once you've typed it go up to the change the font family icon and then you can play around with whatever text style you want. I'm going to use I think Callisto MT. I could use it in bold and I'm not going to bother to change the font size for the moment. I'll resize that when I've put it on the heart. So click apply and then close. So I'm now going to select the text and I'm going to play around with the size. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Now, I personally don't like to use black text too much because I think it's a little bit harsh, particularly on light blue. So I'm going to change that to, yeah, I think that's fine. Okay, so there we have it. That's all um, for today and thank you very much for joining us. If you do have any questions about what you've just seen or if you've got any other feedback, please do contact us. You can do this by visiting our page on Facebook, the details of which you can find below. And so from me now, I'll say goodbye until next time.